I'm just kidding. These are just these like lights that were sent to me by Spiffy, Spiffy Gear. They're pretty awesome. Your first tip, bonus tip of the video before jumping right in. When you have practical lights, it'll always make whatever effect you're doing that much more realistic. Guess what we're talking about? We're talking about, we're talking about Photoshop. And if you're a filmmaker like myself, you're probably thinking, hey, I don't take photos. I don't do effects on photos. I don't need to make my butt bigger or anything like that. Why should I care about this video? Well, let me tell you, there is gonna be five things in this video that will cover uh, pretty much ways to enhance even your cinematography, the way that your footage looks and also ways that you can use Photoshop in your post-production pipeline to create some pretty stunning visual effects. So, without further ado, let's jump into it. So Photoshop, this is something that we've covered a bunch on the channel before. We've done matte painting, we've done concept artwork. So already there is a lot of applications even in the planning stage of even filmmaking where Photoshop really becomes the center tool uh, to sort of express some uh, preliminary ideas out and kind of get a visual look of what you have in mind. So sometimes because of you know low budgets or whatever the case may be, there's a lot of limitations that indie filmmakers face. And sometimes when you kind of conceptualize a shot and you think of it in your head and then you capture it, it's not as stunning or as perfectly crafted as you would want it to be. That is the perfectionist in every creator, but especially for cinematographers, for filmmakers that care to kind of add that little sprinkle on top, uh, this can help you a lot. And yes, it starts from Photoshop. So before getting into the crazy VFX applications, let's start with something pretty basic. And uh, let's take a look at how you can actually enhance the lighting, the look, and the feel of your shots by using Photoshop elements. So the first thing that I wanna take a look at is how you can create highlights. You can create sort of rays of light, different direction of light, and you can create custom made assets in Photoshop. So for example, let's take a look at this video from a while back. It's this shot of a time lapse and there's a bunch of people going by and we just wanna keep our focus and our attention to the center where our main subject is. Now, the problem with this is that humans tend to kind of get distracted automatically when they see other human faces, especially when there's people walking towards you and away from you. You know, it's, it's hard to keep that focus locked into where exactly you want it to be. And this isn't just with people in the frame, it's pretty much any wide shot. A lot of times you're gonna find objects and things that could be a little bit distracting and that you might wanna to tone down and can kind of occlude some of the more distracting elements and I use this trick all the time. And you can color pick colors that are present in your scene. So for example, if you're painting in light, you know, look at the, the brightest spots in your scene and uh, maybe don't go for the absolute brightest because that might clip, that could be white, but pick colors that are right around that. And you can sort of get these hues that are actually present in your scene. And you can use that as the color of your brush to then paint in certain elements. Another quick tip that I'll add in here, you can actually lower the opacity of your brush in Photoshop so that as you paint through different layers, they're actually starting to blend in in different ways that might seem a little bit more organic than just a straight stroke of a full, you know, opaque of that one color. Once you have a shape or something that looks interesting, export those elements. You can export them as a PNG, uh, you know, so that there's no background or you can even export it with a black background and adjust those blending modes once you're into your uh, editing software of choice. In my case, it's Premiere Pro, so I can add these elements in there, set them to screen, set them to soft light, and uh, we start to get some pretty interesting looks and effects that can, uh, that can really elevate our, uh, our image. So we can move these things around, of course, once you are in your editing program. The nice thing is that you've created a new asset that you can scale up, move around, rotate, and really fine tune and place it exactly where you want it in your frame. So that's my first tip. It's honestly, I know it's a lot packed into that, but it's super simple techniques. It's a very easy way to use Photoshop without getting into a ton of layers. And just with this technique alone, you can really do a lot in terms of cinematography, in terms of really capturing the feel, and again, that direction of attention that you really wanted to do that sometimes, again, because of limitations, maybe on set you weren't able to achieve. So, moving on to number two. I'm gonna skip around a little bit. I'm gonna actually jump into VFX because the, the second most favorite thing that I like to do 
with Photoshop in my filmmaking editing process is creating set extensions, creating uh, map paintings, literally expanding your world, your sets that you have available into whatever you want. And this gets pretty intense. So this isn't a tutorial for it. It's just making you aware of this so that, you know, if you are interested, you can actually follow along with step-by-step uh, -step tutorials, time lapses, speed arts that I have on my channel. But this is just to give you an idea on how you can use these techniques in a real setting. So map paintings have been used for a very long time, way before Photoshop. They were actually just paintings on, on glass that then would be placed literally as the foreground in the camera with cutouts that would uh, reveal essentially, you know, the real characters in the scene. And of course, from there, it evolved to involving mats, even with film printers and all kinds of complicated processes that thank God we don't have to deal with today. But we have Photoshop today, and that is essentially how most map paintings are done in modern films, such as Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, I mean, you name it. Even video games, they use map paintings. And so, what are map paintings? Essentially, there are a collection of photos that when stitched together, they create a new world. That is a very rough way of saying it, and a lot of times it involves real painting techniques, even in Photoshop. You can get some really incredibly photorealistic results, especially for things that are meant as a background. So my favorite way of doing this is, again, thinking of real locations, real sets that give you a feel uh, and a look that belongs into the map painting, into the world that you're envisioning, and literally treat that as your foreground set. So you can have your characters and different elements interact on a much smaller scale, knowing that then you can extend the background and what is beyond them to whatever you want through the use of map paintings. A famous examples of this are The Walking Dead. I mean, a lot of that series use map paintings and, and all that. And, it's honestly super inspiring to even see all that work and it just gives you an idea of how many ways there are to use matte paintings. So from there, I guess I'm going to include it in tip number three. Of course, you don't have to just do a whole background. You can add and track in individual elements uh, in your scene. This could be made to cover up certain things that you don't want or adding certain elements that you want to drop into your scene that you want to kind of clean up and prep. In After Effects, for example, we have masks, we can feather masks. There's sort of, you know, we're, we're a little bit limited by what we can do in terms of blending objects together and really fitting them to an environment. So sometimes it's nice to be able to jump into Photoshop and actually use brushes to occlude certain parts or to really paint things in or out in a much more specific and detailed way. And then of course, you can export them as PNG. You can even export the Photoshop file itself to then import into After Effects with all the layers preserved. And it's, it's just a great way to actually save you a lot of headaches instead of having to click, 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 click and create all these intricate masks that a lot of times could be uh, much more uh, easy when you just use a brush and some basic mats. So just to get a little bit more specific, once you're in Photoshop, you can literally create a mat uh, from whatever layer that you wanna play with. And in that mat, you essentially have black and white values. And black are the portions that you see through, so the, the transparent parts, and white is fully opaque. And this is a nice way of doing it because it's non-destructive, you're not erasing parts of the actual thing, you're just playing around in this separate channel that allows you to create transparency values for your main asset. So super useful for compositing in general, having this in your toolkit and being aware that you can composite things in a much more specific and clean way helps a lot. And believe me, I didn't think this was useful, I didn't think this was necessary, and I was doing everything inside of After Effects. I realized just how much I was missing out by not using Photoshop. Okay, so speeding right to number four already? Are we ready at number four? Number four is creating displacement maps in Photoshop to use in After Effects. This is sort of a hybrid and it's a tip more on After Effects, but displacement maps are super useful for you to create all kinds of different effects. And it's pretty much what it sounds like. Displacement maps are displacement effects that are based on information given by a map. This map, in our case, it's an image with, again, black and white grayscale values that can let After Effects know how much to the store in what areas. So this is super useful because you can create some really trippy effects with displacement maps. There's all kinds of uses for them. And a great way to use Photoshop for displacement maps 
is of course to create sort of interesting shapes with different brushes and things and uh, letting that be the guide in how you transform and displace things. There's definitely a lot that you can play with with displacement maps and I'm sure you've seen them in some VFX and title sequences or just about anything related to VFX because they are used a lot. Now before jumping into number five, I want to insert here a bonus tip which is also our sponsor for this video, Yellow Images. Now Yellow Images is a marketplace with mockups, a bunch of assets that you can use as overlays or even Photoshop actions as well as creative fonts these like 360 elements that actually inspired me to make matte paintings as well as uh, 3D low poly art style, which was definitely something new for me. But that is a great source of a bunch of tools that will speed up your workflow. I mean, you can find smoke overlays, all these different things that will actually tie into our last tip. And it's just a way for you to essentially leverage other people's work, other people's hours spent creating these assets so that you don't have to and you can just jump in to the more creative side of just applying these different tools in the ways that you want. So it's honestly one of my favorite go-to places when I need any image related thing. And by the way, they were actually kind enough to offer you and whoever's watching this video a discount. So make sure you use this discount code right here and check out the link in the description to check out Yellow Images. And guys, I'm not just saying this, I really, really love them. And I also really appreciate their continued support. It really does make a difference in this channel. And I think if you're interested in Photoshop stuff, you definitely want to make a pit stop there and see what they have to offer because there's a lot of really good stuff. But now let's talk about the final tip and that is deleting unwanted objects, people or things from your shot. Now this applies to VFX, this applies also to map paintings such as maybe deleting people from a crowded street and making it post-apocalyptic or even just creating a clean plate for your VFX. And it's actually very, very simple. And there's a few ways of doing this in Photoshop. So the first way is by using the clone stamp tool. And essentially you are sampling parts of your image or shot and you're using that to paint over other parts of it that you want to erase. Another cool thing that is getting better and better with every iteration of Photoshop is the content aware fill tool. And you can essentially use a lasso tool or just any way to select a portion that you want to delete from your image. And you can see what kind of results Photoshop will give you based on filling that area in with content aware. And pretty much it'll do some calculations to kind of average things out and figure out the best way to fill in that area based on the information that is around that selected area. And just like that, those are very very simple ways to again create clean plates or very quickly erase things from a shot which has a ton of uses in not just cleanup for matte paintings and other things even just within Photoshop but also a lot of VFX applications. I also have an announcement coming up. I'm not gonna share too much in this video because this is about Photoshop but I do have a pack coming out of particles, of dust elements, of really things that can really heighten your video and that will be coming out October eighth I think yeah you guys have been loving the first pack right there let me, let me grab it there we go vintage light effects uh, I really appreciate you guys support by buying this using it in your projects it's honestly really amazing to see that and I really appreciate all the support um, yeah these are light elements but that is not what the announcement will be the announcement will be a new pack <laughs> stay tuned for more information on that but I'm pretty sure you're gonna love this one as well so there we go Photoshop and tricks and ways to improve your shots and polishing steps and details in your VFX workflow all the way to creating new worlds there's definitely quite a range with Photoshop that goes well beyond uh, skin retouching and just the usual cliches that Photoshop is known for it is a filmmaking and visual effects tool and I use it in almost every project so it's definitely something that I would encourage you to test out in using it in your workflow and I'm telling you you're gonna see the benefits it's definitely a tool that you want to know if you want to learn Photoshop if you're completely new to Photoshop I'm gonna post a link I'm not sure which side uh, an info card where it's gonna take you to a run through a video one video that literally covers everything that you need to know in Photoshop to get started and start really having fun and playing around so 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, this wasn't a tutorial, it was more of an overview as far as the uses that Photoshop can have. And I hope that it actually put things into perspective in a different way for you if you weren't aware of these things. And if you were, let me know if you've used them or ways that you've seen them that was super inspiring. And let me know which one of these ways of using Photoshop was your favorite. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to tune in for the announcement for Particles. That's the new pack. And if you don't want to wait for that, this one is live on my website, so you can get that right away. And with that being said, my name is Chris Trini for Chris Gar, and I will see you next time. Let's put the dog in the car and go for a drive. But we don't have a dog a car or any goddamn time we're getting by. Let's get the Christmas stuff out there